hey what is up youtube welcome to another youtube video today we're gonna take a look at this boosted board v1 it's a dead board and i got it used as is as you can see and it is not turning on i have no remote and i have no charger so we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and see what's wrong with it let's get started here is the battery pack still looks decent even though there is no juice it's completely dead no light and the previous owner also added an external battery port as you can see these are female cooler connectors i think this was to allow the board to get power from an external battery so the first thing I'm gonna do is to remove the battery and as you can see you have six screws that you have to remove first so let's remove the six screws alright so the screws are out can see you have two adapters one I believe is plastic and one metal same thing on the other side and the battery comes out as you can see and from here you're gonna go ahead and remove 11 inner screws as you can see around this is for the water resistance the next step is to use a flathead screwdriver and pry on the sides as you can see you want to be very careful on this step because you don't want to poke the batteries uh, make sure you know what you're doing before you try this because this can literally uh, burst into flames and potentially burn down your house as you can see this is the battery setup this is not your usual 18650 or 21700 cells Instead, Boosted Board decided to use these huge battery cells. Let's go ahead and measure for voltage. And nope, as you can see, we have no voltage on the main leads. Let's check on every single cell. Nothing. Nothing. so as you can see all 12 cells are dead so I'm gonna go ahead and try to charge it now if your batteries are in this case I wouldn't recommend using them I'm just doing this for uh, experimentation purposes alright so instead of uh, applying 3 volts to each cell I'm just gonna try to charge it conventionally I will apply 40 something volts onto the charging port through the wires I have some alligator clips I have this 12 volt battery pack that I built right here I will pin a video of uh, me building this battery pack on the top right if you want to check it out and I will connect it to this voltage booster I also reviewed this device video on the top right if you want to check it out and then I will boost the voltage from 12 volts from this battery pack to 40 something volts and apply it directly to the BMS 
and try to charge the battery backup because as you can see here a standard charging method is about 3.6 volts at two and a half amps so 3.6 volts at times the by 12 because we have 12 cells on series we have 43.2 battery pack set this output to 2 amps and then the voltage to 43 alright 43 volts and then I will click ok now 43 volts negative to negative and as you can see we have a blinking red LED no idea what's going on so apparently this blinking light is called the blinking red light of death and it usually happens when you let the board sit for a long time uncharged so I guess this is what's happening here a quick search on this issue showed a lot of people using a drill to spin uh, the wheels and regenerate power and send it back to the board and that would fix the issue I also see a lot of people put it on a treadmill and uh, I don't have a treadmill handy but I can try the drill and see if it works so let's give it a try alright so the sticky side is on the outer end so it doesn't stick this goes right here and then the drill is gonna go right here as you can see so let's give it a try Okay, that did not work. We still have the blinking red light. I ended up connecting the power supply directly onto the main leads of the battery. As you can see, the voltage is ramping up slowly. It's at 20 volts. I applied 30 volts directly onto the main battery leads and it's charging this is not the safest way to go because it's completely bypassing the BMS and it's charging the whole pack without the BMS so I'm gonna wait until it picks up a little bit and then I'm gonna try to charge it normally can see it's still going up 21.8 24 it's going up I think I'm gonna stop it now now I'm gonna measure the voltage on the whole pack So we had voltage but it's dropping really really fast as you can see which is not good I think the battery sat for way too long they're quickly losing power before it runs out of power I'm gonna connect it right here directly and next I'm gonna send power and now as you can see we have a steady red light meaning that the battery is being charged so we are 
good. 28 volts. Drawing two and a half amps. And we're still in business. And also remember that if you want to do this, you want to be really careful. You want to also keep an eye on the temperatures. As you can see here, it does climb a little bit. It's at uh, 152 degrees, which is pretty hot. It's uh, the MOSFETs right here. So you want to keep an eye on the temps. Probably going to have to reduce the current. Right now it's charging at two and a half amps. The boosted board original charger is rated for 2.7 amps. This is slightly lower than that. I don't know why it is getting so hot. hundred and fifty degrees I mean it's not terribly hot because it's beeping because I set the temperature alarm to 140 but I'm gonna just keep an eye on it all right 156 degrees and also I'm not sure if you can see it but it looks like this cell right here is getting really really hot I think this is a bad cell I'm gonna have to remove it and I'm also gonna stop charging as you can see we have a blinking light again yep that is a really warm cell so I completely removed the battery Alright, so here I'm about to charge the batteries. As you can see, I have it hooked up to this battery charger. So I welded six cells in series, as you can see. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the battery type, and it's a uh, LIFE battery. And as you can see, it's detected, it's a 6S battery. It's gonna charge at 1.5 amps and the fully charged battery voltage 3.65 volts all right then we're gonna go ahead and 
let's first check the voltage of each cell as you can see there are, we can go ahead and check for internal resistance all right as you can see the internal resistance we have 27 milliohms 22 34 29 33 69 not exactly equal but uh yeah they're fairly balanced they're all 2.8 2.9 range and 2.5 so that's a fully discharged lifey battery voltage and when they're fully charged they're gonna be 3.65 volts so let's go here we select lifey and we can go ahead and start charging. All right, we are charging, and here we can see a graph, and we can switch to cells and keep an eye on all the batteries at once. So let's wait until it's fully charged. it's uh, almost fully charged as you can see all right so in the end this is what we ended up having we have all of these nine bad cells as you can see here I charged them and let it sit overnight and when I checked the voltage they were down to half a volt one volt or all the way down to zero so only these three cells are successfully kept and held charge so these are gonna be my only good cells amongst the 12 battery cells uh, we will move from this boosted board battery pack so I wouldn't say this was a repair the battery probably sat for way too long and unfortunately these guys couldn't hold I'm not sure if the BMS is reusable so yeah let's go ahead and wrap this up I'm probably gonna reuse this enclosure to build a different pack using different cells I'm not sure about the form factor but I think I can fit a maybe a 10S2P using 18650s this is probably way too small for that so I got three good cells from it not sure what I'm gonna do with them but uh, let me know what you think thank you for watching see you on the next video